I would like uh, to talk about the fact that we did put together this top 10 by 20 plan um, to achieve our vision that Missouri public schools are the best choice um, with the best results. We launched the plan in, in 2009 with the intention of moving forward to having the top 10 performance and ranking among the top 10 states in the nation. As the new commissioner, uh, people have asked me whether or not I believe being among the top 10 states is an ambitious goal. Ambitious, probably. Necessary, yes. So why do we need a statewide plan to get us there? Well, Abigail Adams once said that learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with ardor and attained to with diligence. And that's the mission of public schools across our country, attending to children's learning with diligence and encouraging them to never stop seeking opportunities to learn. The intended purpose of public schools is to provide high quality education for all students. Grounded in this belief upon which our country was founded, educators work to ensure that every student grows into a self-sufficient, contributing member of society, no matter their starting point. And this charge becomes increasingly complex as economic challenges, accountability pressures, and political influences continue to alter the landscape. Now, education justifiably remains a primary importance for local, state, national, and even political leaders. And so I want to thank you, as leaders of our education system, for staying educated on the issues and for working with expediency to ensure that our children are receiving the best education in the world. Now, if you're following national discussions on education, you are seeing that while each state has its own uniqueness, most are dealing with similar issues. Debate stems around academic standards, the use and or misuse of standardized testing results, school choice, emerging technologies, and other common themes. And while these are, no doubt, important issues to address, we must, with unfailing persistence, redirect much of this energy to a deep focus on improving opportunities for each child's future. So as the new commissioner, I've also been asked on a number of occasions, why do public schools matter? All of us here serve public schools. Why do we do it? Why does public education matter? Because every child matters. Rich or poor, urban or rural, children dealing with disabilities, are children who easily excel. Every child in this country has the right to a free, high-quality public education. Public schools, open to all, can help our children learn and celebrate their differences. And strong public schools can also help strengthen Missouri's economy. Strong schools attract businesses. They build a stronger, better, educated workforce. Property values are higher around good public schools. Strong public schools can break the cycle of poverty that burdens so many of our families and can help lower dropout rates and decrease crime. I can think of no greater honor than to serve the students of Missouri. While our efforts in public education support all students, I hope we can take that a step further and help children find their passion in life to help them seek an early understanding of how education is the key to equipping themselves with the skills and knowledge needed to achieve their individual goals and dreams. And this, as a group of students recently pointed out to me, will require the ability to self-teach and to learn and adapt every day. The ability to challenge our children to reach for any dream is Missouri's greatest resource and it's one of our greatest obligations. And with that, I'm going to move to our goals. The top 10 by 20 initiative is really founded on three goals. One, that all Missouri students are, will graduate ready for college and careers. Two, that all Missouri children will begin kindergarten ready to be successful in school. And three, Missouri will prepare, develop, and support 
effective educators. So goal one, all Missouri students will graduate college and career ready, takes on greater policy and planning significance when you focus on two critical words, all and and. College and career ready is an intentional shift from college or career ready. This does not mean college for all, but rather that the skills and knowledge necessary to be successful in the workplace or in post-secondary job training are as rigorous as those needed for first year college. And now on the all part, Missouri is tremendously diverse. We educate more than 900,000 children pre-K through 12 in public schools. There are 518 school districts, and that's down two from last year, two special school districts, and 37 charter LEAs. The smallest district geographically is Brentwood, just over two square miles. Putnam County, on the other hand, is the largest, with a little more than 507 square miles. Miami has the few, fewest students per square mile, at less than one, while Clayton has nearly 730 students per square mile. So the term, uh, the term all is challenging in terms of education planning. We need to consider what's best for students with special needs and what that means when approximately one in eight children have individual education plans or IEPs. We consider students of poverty and a state where 50% of our students now qualify for free and reduced priced lunch. We also consider students who do not yet speak English fluently, and Missouri is among the top 10 states in percentage growth of, of English language learners. In the St. Louis School District alone, children come to school speaking more than 40 different languages. Our vision focuses on the belief that all children can succeed. What would it mean for our state educationally and economically if all students would graduate ready to be successful in the workplace. We are troubled, just as some of our colleagues in higher education are troubled by post-secondary remediation rates, and that's why we've been working together over the past few years with the Department of Higher Education and with business and industry to more clearly identify what all students should know and be able to do upon completion of high school. This goal graduating college and career ready students as at the heart of all of our school improvement efforts. On the flip side, we have also seen increased participation in our high school students in AP courses, uh, early college, dual credit, and we are encouraged um, through policies like those found in Missouri School Improvement Program that provide students with increased rigor as soon as the individual child is ready. We can focus our efforts on giving our children authentic learning opportunities through Pathways to Prosperity, CAPS, Project Lead the Way, or other opportunities that help children make the connection between the classroom and a successful life. We have districts with tremendous wealth, sometimes right next door to districts with children caught up in a cycle of poverty. And we know that quality classroom instruction and early childhood uh, instruction can't always overcome hunger and homelessness. The pressures of poverty, hunger, and lack of stability at home have a pro profound effect on children's ability to learn. That's where public education can support pre-K through 12 so that uh, in district collaboration, and they can facilitate with wraparound services such as school food programs, in-home visits, after-school care. We can assure these students have transportation intervention strategies, and access to needed supports and services to help keep them in school. This isn't just an issue for our urban areas. Many of our students in rural communities struggle with poverty. The issue here is that we cannot prescribe wraparound services. Each district has its own unique community needs, and you as local board members know that. Once the needs are identified, the community can work together to meet the needs. For some districts, it may be as simple as installing washers and dryers or allowing children opportunity to shower when they don't have running water at home. Many students are able to have meals at school when there's a shortage of food at home. Providing children with basic medical, dental, and mental health care removes obstacles to learning and helps them focus on classrooms. And assisting children 
and need is another way that schools can lift up students so that they can learn and grow and achieve. But I'm not suggesting that schools take on one more thing. Our teachers, although they want to, but our teachers cannot do it all. I do believe that the schools can play a significant role in facilitating those uh, organizations and those support systems. It's a way to reach the goal by having all children ready to be successful. So why do state expectations matter? Why does the state come in and say that all children should be ready to be successful? Well, this document, which I know you really can't read, but you'll, you'll get the point when I explain it. This document was presented at, at the NASB regional meeting a couple of weeks ago showing the disparities between state tests uh, in 2013 with the national, um, the national NAEP tests in terms of the percent of students who are reported as proficient. The gray line represents the percent proficient reported on the state fourth grade reading test, and the blue line shows the percent proficient reported on the NAEP. One state had as much as a 60% difference. So just imagine this, that top line there, you can see that the state was reporting that 95% of their students were proficient, while the national measure was showing that 35% of them were proficient. So why did I include this chart in today's presentation? First, um, you'll notice that if you can see that arrow, that's where Missouri is. The Missouri alignment of fourth grade reading is one of the best in the country, we're sixth. The report states that many states continue to mislead the public about whether students are proficient. Parents, students, and teachers deserve transparency and accuracy in public reporting. And so sometimes while we're not pleased with what we see on Missouri proficiency rates, particularly when our neighboring states are showing much higher proficiency rates, which they all are, uh, then we, we have that to, to deal with, but we are very aligned with the national reporting. So that's our current reality. We're number sixth in the state. Uh, on alignment. Um, I also brought it to our attention because over this last legislative session, there's been a, a more and more language presented or discussions talking about local um, standards, local accountability, and what that would look like. And so I just want to ask you to think about if we, if we moved away from, you know, everything's somewhat relative. How did my neighboring district do? How did the neighboring state do? If we moved away, and, and, and I am a big, big supporter of local control, so I want you all to hear this very carefully. I'm a big supporter of local control, local curriculum, local instruction, local things that happen. But is there a, a place for a statewide standard, or if, if that became a local issue where people were developing and reporting out their own proficiency rates, would it look something, could it possibly look something like this? So I'm asking you to keep that in mind as uh, local board members, uh, I can just, my, my experience just shows me that when, when we had our, our charter schools doing that, um, it wasn't long before everybody said, let's use a standardized system so we all know what's being ported, and, and they really embraced using the annual performance remar uh, report so that everybody can see similar, similar results on at least one metric. Okay, with that, with that I'm going to move to goal two. Goal two, um, we know that for goal one to be met, we have to start really early. All Missouri children will enter kindergarten ready to be successful in school. There are more than 233,000 three to five year olds in Missouri. Of those children, more than 40% do not be, uh, report not being enrolled in childcare, preschool, or kindergarten. And while some of them may have very high quality learning opportunities at home with a relative, many children do not. So this is all about providing access. Research shows that the most receptive learning occurs before age five. And while passage of House Bill 1689 last session was a start, we must strive to provide access to high quality uh, early learning opportunities across the state. So what can we do without funding? Start early to take advantage of critical, time-sensitive opportunities to help our most disadvantaged kids. Coach parents to stimulate their children, engage in conversation, and read to a child every single day. And remember that Parents as Teachers, our Missouri program Parents as Teachers, is a valuable, valuable resource for Missouri school districts. Goal three. We recognize, though, that all of our educational efforts wouldn't mean much without qualified teachers leading every classroom and qualified principals leading every school. 
Teachers are the number one classroom-based influence on learning, and principals are the top building-based influence. So here we connect to the third goal, preparing, developing, and supporting our effective educators. Missouri is making great strides in this goal. New teacher training standards have been put into place and are designed to attract the best and the brightest to the profession. Teacher candidates will learn more rigorous content in their targeted subject areas, have higher GPAs, and prove their proficiency in content testing and clinical experiences, including student teaching and internships. The department provides opportunities for professional development and support for nearly 67,000 teachers in Missouri school districts. Those teachers are evaluated by their school principals, and we are providing training to principals and other evaluators to help make sure the evaluations are fair, thorough, and accurate, and that they lead to, continued, to continuous growth in our educators. Our goal is to have an effective, qualified teacher in every classroom, helping every student learn. And Paul, where are you? I would also like to point out Paul Kat Dr. Paul Katnick uh, is very responsible for a lot of the work that we're doing. He's here today having a presentation later today. If you want to drop by and see Paul, uh, I'm sure he'd be glad to, to speak with you. Uh, Missouri is actually uh, being recognized and being, and being requested to serve as a, as a model for other states right now because of the very responsible way um, that uh, Dr. Katnick has designed the evaluation system calling upon multiple measures, calling on local control and influences on the decisions that are being made, and an appropriate use of, of testing data in those decision making. So stop by and talk to Paul when you get a chance. So we're excited about these goals, and we're committed to helping our schools reach them. Missouri's children deserve nothing less, and it's our responsibility to give them the skills and the knowledge to attain fulfilling lives and careers. In the end, the entire state benefits from an improved educational performance. So I'll close with three asks that align to our goals. The first goal, let's hold our students accountable for being the best they can be. Let's establish the high expectations that they need so that they can learn to follow their goal and we need to push them to the limits so that they're able to achieve them. And, and I just want to tell a really quick story if I could. Thursday, I had the opportunity to drop in at uh, St. Louis Public Schools uh, they happen to be having a training that morning for all of their uh, Missouri School Improvement Grant, the MOSIG program uh, in our lowest performing schools. They brought their principals and teachers together for a two-week intensive training in preparation for next school year. So they, they said, just drop on by. So I, I stopped in, and um, I was a little confused leaving at, at this big high school building. And, and, the, and so the, I think it was a maintenance man said he would help me walk. I didn't really know who was, would walk me out and had the elevator key for me and kind of walked me to the car. So he's walking me to the car, and he goes, who are you? You know, so I said, well, I'm Margie Van Dieven. I'm the, I'm the new commissioner for the state of Missouri. He goes, oh, and then he goes, well, I'm a nobody, which I said, well, I don't believe that. Um, but then he said, well, um, he proceeded to ask me some really hard questions, really hard questions that I didn't have all the answers to, questions like, well, what are we going to do for the children we've already lost? What are we going to, you know, all those, those types of really hard questions to ask or to, to answer. And so he got, we got to my car, and he looked me in the eye, and he said, this is what we need to do. We need to push our kids as far as we can push them. And don't give up. Keep pushing them. And we have to hug them. We have to know when to push, and we have to know when to hug them. He said, because if we push them to their limits, they'll do what you're asking them to do. And if you hug them, if you remember to hug them, they'll come back and say, if it weren't for you. And so I, that was just a really, as, as board members, as school leaders, let's think about that. We gotta push our kids, we gotta hug our kids, and they'll be what we need them to be for our futures and for their futures. Number two, read a book to a child. I know that sounds so simple, but it's, it's becoming some of a lost art, but when you talk about that, when you really read the research of what happens between zero and five, it's frightening. It's phenomenal, but almost frightening. Read a book to the child. Stimulate the conversation with your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, your students in school. And then number three, support our teachers. Uh, you just heard me talk about how what we're doing is so critically important for our teachers. Uh, and, and everything that we're doing is designed to elevate the profession and to recognize that. And right now, they're feeling a little bit put upon and tired, which is the unintended consequence of what we're trying to do over here. We need them. 
We need them to be as highly effective as possible, but we need to support them in getting there. So those are my three asks this, this morning. Um, we at the department know how hard your teachers, principals, superintendents, and you as board members are working to provide your communities with great schools. While we may hear an awful lot of, of uh, plaguing stories around our struggling schools throughout the state and some things that are happening in education, the reality is that over 97% of our districts are meeting, or and many of them are, are far exceeding the state standards. And as the new commissioner, I've been taking some opportunity to go across the state and visit different schools. Great things are happening in our schools. Um, we are the ones that need to tell that story. You are the ones that need to tell that story. It doesn't sell, I get it, but we can't stop telling that story. Great things are happening for our kids. Uh, we are moving forward as a state and we can't lose sight of that. If you have questions about anything, please do not hesitate to contact us at the office. We really are here to support you, and we look forward to working together uh, as partners with you as we move the state forward and meeting our goals. 